Hey guys, Hugh McCorn here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing what happened to IO Games. Now, this is a whole new series that I thought of. I know what happened, like videos, are quite popular right now, and they're usually just on certain creators and people that rose to success, then just dropped instantly. And this is going to be kind of like that, but instead of just creators, it's going to be games. Everything about this series is going to be on one of the community tabs. I put all the information there, so go have a look. You're going to be hearing the words IO games a lot and just a lot of repetitive words so you know prepare yourself for that but yeah let me know if you find this series enjoyable down below for like gaming tips tutorials glitches or gaming content in general make sure to subscribe right down below and yeah let's get straight into the video so before we talk about the rise downfall we need to understand what IO games actually are because I think a lot of people don't know where they came from and the exact meaning of an IO game so the whole design and mechanics of IO games are really simple like Agaria which you're just a fucking blob but the .io part came from a military kind of thing and it stands for Indian Ocean they didn't they hardly used it at all so a game company used used the domain to make a the first ever IO game which was actually Agario and every single like IO game is a browser based game which means you don't have to download them there's no like check through you have to do it's just like a domain you type it in and it's just like an online kind of game now we know what the majority of IO games are let's talk about the rise of IO games to obviously get a better understanding of the downfall of them so in 28th of April 2015, Agorio was created and because of how like unique the whole design and mechanics are, like no other game had this kind of like idea. It took off really, really quickly and there was one thing that kind of gave the whole game a huge boost. And that was how the game was getting advertised. And I'm not saying obviously they're sticking up banners everywhere, going on like Google ads or something and popping up in videos. But when people, specifically children, when they started playing this game, they became addicted because of how like simple and it was just like an addictive game in general. They started playing it a lot more, which meant the game was being seen by other people a lot more, leading them to try it out themselves and then kind of like a whole loop of the same thing happening. I also think because the game was free to play without any downloads, it tempted people to try it out even more because it's easier to access and they don't have to worry about getting a virus or being hacked because of like the download it made it a lot even more tempting and trustworthy for other people to try it themselves and obviously parents don't want their children going all these virus websites don't want to check what they're going on and Agaria seemed like a very trustworthy site overall because of this it was like an underlying advertisement and obviously YouTube videos obviously helped out a lot like seeing the biggest creators playing a game that's so easily accessible is just a huge advertisement and this is one of the only games that kind of could have done that and it nailed it straight in the way and like did it the best out of all the other games that were trying to do it at the time and it's kind of funny because the devs didn't purposely do this and they didn't even know it was happening at the time which is also good because they can't do anything to mess that kind of advertisement up but because of this whole uprise of the game, other companies saw the potential in IO games and started making their own, which is why in the 25th of March 2016, around 11, 11 months after Agaria was created, Slither IO came out, almost instantly becoming a huge, huge success. I think we all remember these IO games, Agaria, I think that was like kind of the main one, then Slither IO and then a few others but because of these IO games and everyone seeing how like successful they're becoming it led to more game developers making more IO games and it all spiraled from there and made like the IO games really really popular and also Agario was put on phone a month later which also did help as well because obviously everyone's got a phone these days who want to play their games on the phone and now they can pretty much play it anywhere which was also a huge boost and it was just all this like advertisement which was boosting these games and just helping so much. So now we understand like the huge huge rise of an IO games but how did it quickly drop instantly so quickly and how did it because obviously you've got this huge advertisement how did it just go away so quickly now this is the main part of the video we all want to know and that is the downfall of .io games in april 2016 a month after sliver io came out and what was some of the most popular io games agario started a steady decline in players and they couldn't really do anything about it and it's all down to the fact that the game is so simple and the mechanics 
mechanics are so simple, there's nothing really like advanced to it and it's not hard to play. It got very repetitive very quickly and specifically IO games had this problem because of the way they were made. The IO game developers didn't even know this was the reason and didn't know what was actually causing the downfall which really didn't help at all. And there was also a huge massive problem that IO games started to have when Agario started to decline in and it was all because of the other game developers making IO games at the time. Since loads of people were trying to make their IO games, they added a twist to the games which was one of the biggest factors in IO games dying. When they made their games, instead of adding like a multiplayer, they put in bots to make it look like you were playing with other people. This was really like, it was one of the first things I noticed because when I turned my Wi-Fi off when I was somewhere else, I'd just see if I could like kind of trick the system, but it was like play the game normally. And then that's when I just instantly realized it was bots. And also other people as well started spamming ads everywhere and soon made half of the IO games untrustworthy, mainly on PC as well, because of all these untrustworthy ads tricking you to click on them and that's what also made IO games kind of decline as well because it's starting to get untrustworthy at this point and this wasn't like Agario or Slither IOs or the main IO games fault it was all the underlying like small IO games that were doing this. Game companies like Ketchup and Voodoo played a huge part in this because we all know how much they spam ads everywhere and just made it a fucking hell to play these games and we all know they spam ads on the games they do today and that's what also I, I kind of think because they spam ads so much and they saw how much money they were getting that's why so many other people started copying that as well and made IO games as well a lot more untrustworthy and unplayable so with fake multiplayer ad spamming and untrustworthy games it made the original IO games look bad, which made it decrease in players even more. To make matters just playing out worse, they added loot boxes and pay to win mechanics because they were like popular at the time to try and save the game, which completely backfired and basically solidified their downfall. So with all this combined, you'd think that Sliver IO, Agario and other IO games are dead in 2020, but there was two things that was actually keeping the game from being completely dead, and that was people that are just first stumbling across the IO game and the secret advertisements, which wasn't really secret at this point because they knew. Because of this, the games technically aren't dead, it's just most of us has got bored and kind of grew up and moved on to other games. As of 2020, the game gets around 65 million visits every month. 85% of those visits go into Slither.io and Agario, and the other 15% going on the other games. Compared to 2017, when 195 million visits a month IO games were getting. So overall, IO games have dropped in players hugely and still is dropping so if nothing happens in the next five to eight years io games could completely fall flat and there is also the fact that people can go back to the games i still play agario slither io some of the other io games here and there it is quite fun and a distracting thing to go to and also one thing i wanted to mention the bot thing isn't completely bad so obviously you can still play IO games when you don't have internet and stuff and when you're out. So it isn't a completely bad thing, it's just the fact that they were pretending that it was multiplayer instead of admitting that they were bots. Let me know your opinion on IO games now. Let me know if you like them, if you still play them, if you've just stumbled across them. And let me know what you think of this video because this took ages to make. It's probably going to take ages to edit as well and it was quite fun making this so i'll probably do another video like this on another game but yeah let me know your whole opinion of it if i got any facts wrong please leave it in the comments below and if you think something else should be added to this if there's something i didn't mention please do leave in the comments below as well and as well as any questions and yeah hope you enjoyed if you did like share subscribe see you in the next one and peace I'm a vampire.